All right, so this is a tutorial video on K1 and K2 aristocrats. I'll be going over uh, how they work when, in terms of the frequency table, and I'll show you some tips and tricks that you can use to solve K1 and K2 aristocrats as quickly as possible. And then I'm, I'll solve some ciphers on my own so you can understand how to apply those uh, tips and strategies. So the main difference for K1 and K2 aristocrats is how the frequency table is, is set up. So in a normal aristocrat, whenever you decode all of the letters in the ciphertext, uh, the frequency table is just going to have a bunch of jumbled up letters on the bottom. But for K1 and K2 aristocrats, uh, there is a specific pattern when it comes to how you fill out the frequency table. Specifically for K1 aristocrats, this pattern is going to be that somewhere in, in the frequency table, you're going to encounter a keyword. In this case, the keyword is motivate. And the reason why it isn't spelled out completely is because if you put a T here, then you'd have two repeated T's back to back. And you can't do that because you can only have 26 letters in a frequency table. So no repeat letters are allowed. And after you have this keyword, uh, you're gonna go through the alphabet in order, excluding the letters that are in the key keyword itself for the reason that you can't have repeat letters. So you'll notice that the letter M is skipped right here uh, because it's in the keyword. Same, with, same thing with O and, and so on. And because K1 aristocrats are always laid out this way, there are a lot of useful tips and tricks you can use when filling out the frequency table that allows you to fill out multiple letters basically immediately. So let's say I'm really confident that C decodes to E in, an, in a K1 aristocrat, and I'm confident that G decodes to I. Based on that information alone, I can automatically determine that D, E, and F decode to F, G, and H respectively because of the whole thing with alphabetical order. And one way that I would uh, uh, figure out uh, when when instances like this are happening is if I see two letters in the frequency table that seem really close together and they make alphabetical sense I'll just go like E F G H I and see if they line up and then I can immediately fill out the frequency table for the letters between them like like this Another simple trick that's really useful is if you have two letters back to back that aren't consecutive in the alphabet, like let's say E and G, then I would immediately know that F is in the keyword itself because that letter is skipped. And you can expand this logic uh, even if uh, letters aren't back to back. So let's say you have E and uh, H here. Since E and H aren't uh, two letters apart, they're three letters apart, because you have E, F, G, H. Now I know either the letter G or the letter F has to be in the keyword, because right now they aren't the correct spacing apart in the frequency table. Another thing to look at when it comes to K1 aristocrats is that whenever you encounter a sequence of letters that are near the end of the alphabet, like let's say W, X, Z or something. I know that immediately after that, there has to be the keyword based off of how the K1 frequency table is structured. And on the other side of that, let's say I, f I have a sequence of letters like B, D, E or something like that. I know that immediately before it, there's probably a keyword. This logic doesn't even have to apply to a sequence of letters. You could know immediately with like one letter. Like if you encounter the letter A at all, if you figured out a letter decodes to A, then I immediately know that the keyword has to be somewhere around that A because the I, either the, the letter A is in the keyword somewhere or the keyword is is not uh, does not contain the letter A and the keyword would be right before it. So that type of information is very useful when you're filling out the frequency table. Another useful aspect of the K1 frequency table is that you can use it 
in the early stages of solving a cipher to determine if, if you're on the right track. So let's say in this example, you are confident that R decodes the T and that T decodes the I, maybe because T is a single letter uh, somewhere in the cipher text and I is a, is a common single letter word. Um, immediately, I would have to assume that T and I are part of the keyword because obviously T comes before I, not after in the alphabet. And because if you assume that, let's say, maybe T is part of the keyword, but I isn't, then uh, you would have like some letter here, like B or A. And then you have a bunch of letters skipped and all of those letters would be in the keyword. That's very unlikely. So the only thing that makes logical sense is that T and I are part of the keyword somewhere along here. And then maybe you have Z here because Z is not a common letter. And this region of the, the uh, frequency table is the keyword. Maybe later on you, you think that C decodes to A because C also shows up as a single letter somewhere. Immediately once I fill this out, I would pretty quickly determine that I've probably made a mistake somewhere when it comes to decoding the letters, purely based off of how a K1 frequency table works. And this is because immediately after the keyword, uh, you would have the letter A somewhere here, or maybe here if the keyword's longer. So it doesn't make logical sense for the letter A to be all the way over here. Uh, and based on that, what I would do is maybe I would uh, change the frequency table up so that T actually decodes to A and then C decodes to I. And this would make more logical sense, I would say, because maybe you have the keyword along here somewhere, and then you have like the letters uh, B, C, D, E, F, G, and something like that. And that would actually make a lot more logical sense. So you can use these types of techniques and like intuition and tricks to help know if you're, you're on the correct path when it comes to solving a K1 or a scrap. All right, now that I shared some tricks when it comes to uh, decoding a K1 cipher, I'm going to try to apply some of those tricks and, and solve a K1 aristocrat on my own. So the first thing I notice here is the first word in the cipher. And this is a really common pattern that I would try to remember, and that is there. Most likely it's there, and that's because I would definitely see the frequency line up here. Like Z is common in the cipher, and, and so is F. So this makes a lot of intuitive sense. And another common pattern is that immediately after the word there, you have the word is a lot. So that pattern makes a lot of sense too. Uh, something else that I'm noticing is this two letter word ZB. Since the first letter is T, the letter after is most likely O. And now this is a one letter word. Since we already know that M decodes to I, this one letter word is probably A. And immediately there are uh, some things that I notice. Um, one of which is this word is probably which, uh, because that's also a common pattern that you know about. And now if I look at the frequency table right now, there are some things I immediately notice. So you have this letter E, and then immediately after it, you have A. And since that's an alphabetical order, I'm pretty sure that the keyword is in this area. Uh, and now I'm noticing that you have A and C. So since we skipped the letter B, I know B is in the keyword somewhere. And since the keyword is in this area, you have like T, R, O. I'm pretty confident that the T word is trouble based off of the letters that, that I've been given. And now you can basically solve the entire frequency table just based off of knowing the keyword and knowing that the letter A is here. So I can do... D, I know the letter E is already taken here, so this has to be F, G, uh, G right here, then you have J, K, uh, L is in the keyword already, so this would be M, then you have N, O is already in the keyword, so you'd put P here, then you have Q, and then R is skipped because it's in the keyword, then you have U, well U is already in the keyword too, so this would be V, 
then you have x, y, and c. And purely based off of the K1 frequency table and knowing the keyword immediately, based off of some intuition and some knowledge of how the K1 frequency table works, we are able to solve the cipher much quicker than we would for a normal aristocrat. And that's the big advantage of knowing how the K1 frequency table works. All right, so now I'll go over how a K2 frequency table works and how it's different from a K1. Basically, all of the uh, earlier tr tips and tricks that I gave before, they still apply in terms of how the keyword is first and then you have the alphabet in order after that and how you can have like letters that skip, e skip each other and any letter that's skipped is in the keyword. The only difference is instead of uh, you filling out the plain text, which is the letter letters that stuff decodes to, uh, in the frequency table you actually fill out the cipher text or the letters on top. So in order to explain this, uh, let's say I'm pretty confident that G decodes to T, partly because I think this word is probably theirs uh, based on patterns. Uh, if in order to fill that out in the frequency table, uh, you got to remember one thing that the ciphertext is always going to be on the top of the frequency table. So if I think that G decodes the T, I'm going to put the ciphertext G on top of the letter T right here. And this applies to every letter in the ciphertext. So eventually when I fill out the whole frequency table, it's going to go like G, H, I. Obviously you're going to skip the letters that are in the keyword. And at the beginning of the alphabet, uh, right before it, you're going to have the keyword somewhere. And that's mainly the, the only difference between a K1 and K2. Uh, all the other same tips and tricks apply. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and, and solve the rest of this K2 aristocrat. Like I said before, I was pretty confident that this word here is theirs. So I, I went ahead and filled that out and put in the frequency table. So we have Q decodes to E, V decodes to H, uh, I decodes to R, S decodes, N decodes to S, and G decodes to T. Um, based off of this, you can notice this ing ending, which usually comes in words. And since words always end in ing, I'm pretty confident that the keyword is going to end here. And immediately after that, we're going to have the beginning of the alphabet. Uh, now, we can go ahead and, and solve some other words too. Like, since we know that g decodes the t, I'm pretty sure that this word right here is that. So then we get k decodes to a, so I'll put that right here, and we have v decodes to h, we already have that. Um, what else do we have? We have this contraction up at the top, you know, that g decodes to t. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is an n apostrophe t contraction based on that. So now we know that o decodes to n. This is probably also part of the keyword. And then we have uh, K decodes to A, so this word is probably can't. And now we get that M decodes to C. And based off of this, uh, we know that L is probably here because KLM. So now we know L decodes to B. Based on the frequency table, we can see that the letter L shows up only once in the ciphertext. And that's up here. And since this word comes immediately after a comma, it's probably uh, the word but. And from that we get that A decodes to U. And we already know G decodes to T. So now we know the word A can't be in the keyword, which is kind of useful. Uh, we can fill out right here A decodes to U. Um, and what else? Oh, we have G decodes to T here. So we know that U probably is O because two is the only two letter word that starts with the letter T. So we put U decodes to O right here. It's also part of the keyword. Um, and this is probably to do. We can uh, put P decodes to D here. And that lines up with the frequency table and the ordering of the alphabet. Um, and immediately from that, we know that since the letters N and O uh, are, are skipped, they're in the keyword, which we already have. 
What else can we put? We have this word MKO right here. Oh, that's right, can. We already know that. This word at the bottom here. Um, we know that N equals to S cubed equals to E. Uh, so we got that word already. We know that O equals to N. U decodes to O. So this is probably the word nothing. Uh, w. Do we know that for sure? Yeah, yeah. So W decodes to I. S decodes to G. We can add that to the frequency table. So W decodes to I. And S decodes to G. So the letters... T and U are skipped, so we know that they're part of the T word, the keyword. So now we know that the letter T is part of the keyword. Um, we have U decodes to O here. It's probably the word U then. So now we know F decodes to Y. And if we spell out the alphabet, we have B, C, D, E, and F. And since there are four letters here and only three letters here, we know that one of these letters, B, C, D, or E, is in the keyword. Um, what else? We have the word U here as well. G U is U do. This is probably the word uh, what. You do what you can. So from that, you get a D to code to W. So now we know that E has to be here because D, E, F, that makes sense alphabetically. And since these two letters are already taken, they're not part of the keyword. So either the letter B or the letter C is in the keyword. Um, what else can we fill out? Uh, up here we have what do you do? This is probably when, when you can't do nothing but there's nothing to do. You do what you can. That, then you have A, Q equals to E. And it goes to S. Uh, we know that um, O decodes to N, U decodes to O. What is this word right here? So we have K decodes to A. Let's fill it out here. O decodes to N, G decodes to T, C. We don't know for sure yet. And I decodes to R. S, what does S decode to? S decodes to G. So this is probably the word grandpa. Apologize for how bad my handwriting is. And what else do we have? Uh, you do, you do what you can. That makes, makes it's probably the word here. That makes no sense, grandpa. So the frequency table would help us get get a few letters here. So I would definitely say it's it's a good uh, tool to use uh, in order to solve an aristocrat faster. So yeah, that, that's the tutorial going over K1 and K2 aristocrats.